gentlemen of the International Secret Police. Dr. Kingsley, after careful study of the map that Larry Winfield sent his sister, thinks that a secret passage beginning either at or near the Siong Dock in Hong Kong Harbor leads directly into the headquarters of the octopus. Speed, Clint, and Barney plan to inspect the dock carefully, disguised as Chinese coolies. Meanwhile, the octopus, knowing of their suspicions, makes arrangements to trap them, and also tells Quan Wu to warn the doctor against giving the secret police any more information. Wu first attends to his duties at the Siong Dock, and then the following morning seeks the doctor at the consul's offices. Good morning, Dr. Kingsley. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Wu. Come right in. You sound as if you had had good news. Well, I am pleased, Obert. I've been assigned a new wavelength and call letters for my amateur station. A new wavelength? May I ask why? Well, since I'm so closely allied with the International Secret Police... I thought it might simplify matters if I could be assigned call letters similar to theirs. I wrote for such permission some time ago, and this morning I received it. I'll get my new transmit up, and then instead of my old call, you can reach me at IS-78. IS-78. Dr. Kingsley, will you accept a word of advice from my good friend? Of course, Quan Wu. Then I would suggest that you have as little to do with the secret police search of the octopus as possible. But why? Everyone is anxious to rid China of this criminal and his evil activities. If I can do anything at all to aid in running him down, I'm only too happy to do so. I know your motives are purely unselfish, but there is much danger in such a search. Perhaps many lives will be lost. The octopus does not recognize rank or power, whether a man be of high station or low. If he is in his way, he is removed. Well, am I to count this as a personal warning? Oh, no. Although it may apply to you if you continue working as you are with the secret police. What have you heard, Guan Wu? Merely, merely whispers from my countrymen that you could never hear, Dr. Kingsley. Well, I appreciate your interest, Mr. Wu, but I cannot accept your advice. A member of my household, my guest, Marsha Winfield, has been kidnapped by this criminal. I'm responsible for that girl... I cannot rest until she is safe. The octopus has no heart. He is ruthless with his enemies. Be careful, Doctor, that as you find Marsha Winfield, you may lose another member of your household. Lose what other member of my household? Your little daughter, Jean. <laughs> to go to the Siang Dock. We're all made up as Chinese coolies, even to the clothes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Barney sure looks funny. He's an old Chinese man. Yeah. I don't know why I'm always the fall guy. If there's any whiskers to wear, I get them. These wispy white things tickle even more than that phony mustache I wore on the trip over here. <laughs> well, I couldn't give you many whiskers, Barney. Mm. Chinese don't have heavy beards, you know. I just gave you enough to make you look venerable. But why couldn't I be young like you guys? Well, I had to change our makeup from that other Chinese makeup we wore the other night, Barney. 
Well, maybe some of the Optimus gang might recognize us. I see there's no use arguing, so let's get going to the dock. The sooner we look the place over, the sooner I can get these whiskers off. Yeah, no, wait a minute. Hold on. You can't go like that. What do you mean? You must suit your actions to match your aged face, Bonnet. Let your shoulders sag and shuffle your feet. Don't walk as if you're in the prime of health. Oh, so I got a shuffle, too, and sag. Huh? <laughs> oh, you sure surprised the Octopus Gang. I wish it happened again to a fight with them. You look real old, but your punches sure won't be. Uh, no, it. Well, that can't be Ying. I talked to him just a little while ago. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, Dr. Kingsley. Wonder if he's heard something about Miss Marcia. Pipe down. Uh, what's that? Yes? And Quan Wu told you that, huh? Gee, wonder what he told him. Shh. Well, don't worry about that, Doctor. I think the octopus is trying another bluff. Uh, well, just keep Jean in the house and she'll be all right. Uh, what's that? Well, if you have nothing pressing to attend to, it might be just as well to go to your home. Just warn your police guard and watch for all suspicious characters. Oh, yes, we were just about to start for the dock when you called. You bet, Doctor. All right, we'll let you know the minute anything happens. Goodbye, Doctor. What did Dr. Kingsley say, Clint? Yeah, now what? Quan Wu gave the doctor a warning just a few minutes ago. Said he'd heard things. Told the doctor that he shouldn't work with us or he'd anger the octopus. How does Quan Wu know so much about it? That's exactly what I'm wondering. Of course, Wu told the doctor that he just happened to hear of this from some of his countrymen. But men in Wu's position don't just happen to hear things like that. Right. We've got plenty to worry about without thinking about him right now. Let's get started for the Seong Dock. Maybe Dr. Kingsley was right about that secret passage to the octopus headquarters starting there. Is everything in readiness, men? Then go to the underground hangar, all of you. I shall await the secret police here in the tunnel, should they happen to stumble on it. I shall give you the signal when to start the seawater pump. And now to report to the octopus. OC-13 calling OC-127. OC-13 calling OC-127. Kwan Wu? Yes, Master. You are speaking from the tunnel shortwave station. Have you contacted Dr. Kingsley yet? Yes, Master, just before I came here. He is worried. Right after you left the consul's office, he called Clint Barlow and reported your warning to him. That will do him no good. Should you decide to go through with the plan? No, even though every policeman in Hong Kong guards the doctor's home, I could send someone within its walls to do my will, and no one would know it until it was too late. What did Marlow tell him? He said that he should keep Jean in the house, that the Kingsley himself should return to his home if possible, and that they were about to start for Siang Dock. How interesting. Are the men in their places? Yes, Master. A few are up on the dock itself, but most of them are in the underground hangar awaiting word as to when they should start the pump. Do not forget to go directly through the secret rock door in the tunnel after you know that the secret police are coming down the passage. Else you will be trapped as well as they. I shall remember, Master. And one thing more. Yes. Have you your mask? Yes. Then you had better put it on now, just in case our enemy should gain entrance without your knowledge and surprise you. I do not want them to recognize you. Very well, Master. I shall be most careful. When they are in the tunnel, and you are through the rock door, come directly to me. I shall be awaiting you. Yes, Master. Meanwhile, I shall be awaiting the secret police. <laughs> the dock. Everything looks quiet on the Siang front. Here, now. Now, wait just a minute. Before you mix with the people on the dock, I, I want to give you both a few last-minute instructions. Sure. Uh, Go ahead, Clint. Now, at all times, remember that you're supposed to be Chinese. Huh. Your safety and perhaps your very life depends on you never getting out of character. Okay. Now, if you find anything suspicious looking or run into any danger, give our whistle. We'll have to separate to search the dock, but in case of an actual pinch, we better stick together. Where do you want us to go, Clint? Well, you stay with me for a little while, Speed. But, Barney, I want you to go down to the end of the dock and mix with those fishermen down there and see if you can pick up any clues. Okay, but I don't see much sense in going down there, Clint. No sort of passage could possibly begin there unless it was underwater. Now, don't decide all that until you're given it careful inspection. 
Uh, Speed and I'll stay around here and see if we can see or hear anything suspicious. Okay, I'll be seeing you. Right, and be careful. Don't worry, pal. Me, China boy, and I mean China grandpa now. <laughs> oh, Barney can't get over those whiskers. Yeah, we'd better forget them. We'll find an octopus gangster tangled up in them. Now, come on now, Speed, and start looking around. But remember this. Make it casual so we won't attract any undue attention. Do you think any of the octopus gangsters are on the dock, Clint? Yeah, very probably. Look, oh, we're getting near the place where Quan Wu pushed me off the dock that night. Yes, and see that you don't tumble into that water again, Speed. Once was enough. I'll say so. But you know what, Clint? I think I'll go down that ladder to the float and look around down there. There's a runway that goes right up to the seawall on shore. Yeah, that doesn't offer us much hope, Speed. I can't tell. I don't know why there's a seawall there anyhow. There's no need for such things in Hong Kong Harbor. It must be there for some good reason. Otherwise, they wouldn't have built it, Speed. Maybe there was danger of the earth crumbling. More of a retaining wall than a seawall. Well, anyhow, I'm going down there to have a look, if it's all right with you, Clint. Well, I think you'll be in less danger from the octopus gang down there at that. All right, you go ahead, Speed. But don't forget to give the signal just in case you do find something suspicious. All right, Clint. So long. All right, so long, Speed. And I'll stay right around here so you won't have to look far when you come up here. Okay. There, I'm down. Might as well go to the seawall along this runway. Whoops! Almost fell in. Gee, this is hard to walk on. It's so darn narrow. Ah, oh, here's the seawall. Let's see now. It sure looks solid enough. Except this plank is a little out of line. Maybe I can fix it. Golly! It's moving! A secret opening! I found the passage to the octopus headquarters! (laughs) 